first of all, welcome to your new job. And um, let me start with a question on Misrata, which you mentioned. Um, the situation there is really not clear at all to us. Uh, would you mind um, explaining whether the opposition forces now control the entire airport and how far <clears throat> they've pushed back the pro-Gaddafi forces uh, to the east and, east and west of the city? Let's be clear. The, the operation that uh, has been set up here has been set up for three distinct roles. The embargo, the no-fly zone, and protecting the civilians. So if the anti-regime forces have been able to take Mazata and move out, uh, I have also seen the open press. The key that I would like to put in here is that yesterday there were no known attacks by NATO onto the city or the port. If we go back 25 days, there were tanks in the streets of Misrata. That is no longer happening. I suggest that NATO has therefore carried out its task well in protecting that port and enable humanitarian aid to get to the city. As far as the position of the anti-Gaddafi forces are and whether they have managed to take the airport, I cannot substantiate that with fixed evidence at this stage. But as and when NATO are able to, we will pass that information to you. Thank you. Yes, please. Yes, <coughs> hello. <coughs> my, my question was also around Ms. Frata. And do you have any technical or military terms, explanations of the fact that rebels all of a sudden are able to push back the uh, <coughs> pro kadhafi forces? Is that, according to you, only uh, because of the uh, firm support by NATO uh, through air raids, or is there anything on the ground that could also explain uh, why the rebels all of a sudden are so efficient? They are so efficient. Okay. Our main date, as I said just now, is quite clear. We do not have forces on the ground. Our role is to protect civilians from attack. So we have concentrated our forces on known sites around Miserata where there have been firings onto and into the city and onto the civilian population. We will continue to attack those sites where missiles, rockets, or any other munitions are being fired upon civilians. I cannot substantiate um, the media on this occasion with where the anti-Gaddafi forces are. Um, what I do know is that yesterday there were no attacks on the civilian population of Misrata or on the port. Thank you. Uh, I think Ansa had a question. Uh, any yeah, more political questions? Uh, well, uh, uh, I go on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, it's about uh, the um, uh, announcement made uh, today by the procurator of the International Penal Court that he said that Monday will launch an arrest warrant against uh, Gaddafi. And my question is, one time that this uh, arrest warrant will be launched, it will change something for NATO. I mean, NATO will start to hunting actively Gaddafi in order to catch him. Well, uh, obviously, uh, NATO fully respects the decisions of the International Criminal Court. And as the Secretary General said uh, recently during his trip to the United States, uh, time is running out for Gaddafi. Uh, so the regime forces should uh, stop immediately any attacks on the civilian population. Also, the regime should withdraw all the forces to their barracks and allow full and unhindered humanitarian access for the people in need. So uh, for the time being, we have a very clear mandate uh, from the United Nations, which is to protect the civilian population from attacks and threats of attacks, and we will continue implementing that mandate. Let's see if Naples is back into the line. I'm Nordin Fridi from the Arab Television, La Arabia. I would like to ask a question if you have any uh, idea about the situation on the ground in the western part of the country, in the Jabal al Gharbi, and uh, mainly also about the movement of troops or fighting uh, in the area close to the borders between Tunisia and, uh, and Libya. Okay, Carmen, can you hear me? Carmen, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. No, maybe anything about uh, activity in the west of Libya and on the Tunisian border. Okay, let's take the west of uh, Libya first. Um, there is movement 
um, across the whole of Libya, and our role continues to be that of protecting the civilians. Um, there is activity in some of the, uh, the towns and cities, and we will liaise where possible um, to ensure that our aircraft can be applied to maintain the safety of the civilians on the ground. Um, that's about all I can say at this stage. Next question. It was Radio Algérie, and then we come to you. Radio Algérie. No, you have to, to answer it. You have to. Uh, it has to be in English. It has to be in English. Uh, en français, si vous voulez bien. Doesn't understand. Okay. No. Ah, okay. Je vais préparer. Okay. So, let's go now to Anna. Um, thank you, Anna Pisonero from uh, the Spanish news agency Europa Press. Um, this past week, uh, Norway and the UK have gone public saying that um, if the mission goes on, prolonges for several months, they might have problems to keep up, to sustain uh, the capabilities to the levels that they are now. Um, as, as, as military on the ground there, do you think that this might have a negative impact? Are you, are, you, are, you, are you currently aware of these possible decisions to cut down contributions in a not too long future? And my second question, if I may, is there seems to be a report that the Gaddafi forces are obliging people to evacuate uh, at gunpoint, uh, whether from Misrata or other coastal uh, cities, um, it, it, does NATO have a strategy against this um, or, or not? Thank you. Or, or not. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> I got two questions there. First of all, there are over 7,000 personnel on Operation Unified Protector and over 200 aircraft and 20 ships provided by NATO and the coalition. From an operational perspective, the commander will effectively deliver the mission with the assets that nations are able to provide. If nations have to change their perspective, or their ability to provide it at some stage, then that will be for a higher command to decide and deliver whatever assets are available. The important thing is here is the commander will deliver the mission with whatever assets are at his disposal. On the second one, the evacuation you mentioned of personnel out of uh, people out of Libya. We are aware that there is uh, our people leaving across some of the land boundaries, and we are aware, are aware that there are some vessels going into the Mediterranean with people on board. Under the circumstances to which they are put onto those ships or select to go onto those vessels, we do not have detail. As I've said before, we do not have people on the ground in Libya. We do not have forces on the ground in Libya. Our role is to protect the civilians. Those civilians that if they go into vessels and go to sea, if they then are encountered um, by NATO vessels, they will be given assistance at best as possible as per the SOLAS agreement. Now, if I can pass to Carmen, please, for any high-level aspects on the contribution from NATO um, nations. Thank you, Mike. I would like to add uh, to the question uh, by Europa Press the fact that uh, all, allies, all allies are determined to implement the UN mandate uh, for, a for as long as necessary. Uh, so that, uh, that I can assure you, everybody's determined to continue the mission until the three objectives set up in Berlin are fulfilled. And of course, the policy of, nat of, of NATO, as you know, is that is, it is for nations to decide how their contributions will evolve. And we all hope that this mission will be over rather uh, sooner than later for the good of the Libyan people. But we are confident that we will uh, continue you having the assets that are necessary to fulfill uh, our mission. ZDF, mm. please. Uh, my name is Kai Niklas. I'm from German television ZDF. Um, you said there are no tanks in the streets of Misrata anymore. Can you give us an idea where the main shootings take place at the moment? Where are the Gaddafi forces uh, um, resisting the NATO attacks? Where, where are the main shootings? In Misrata or somewhere else? And the second question would be, uh, we saw Gaddafi on the screen uh, yesterday. Uh, does NATO know where he is and where these scenes uh, took place? OK, I'll take the first question, um, which was the, uh, the shelling in Misrata. We are aware from um, our ability to, uh, to oversee activity in Libya, 
that the shelling has occurred in the main part of the city and around the port. The uh, pro-Gaddafi uh, tanks that were in the city are no longer in the city. That main reason for that is that as they have uh, been within the area, we have targeted them specifically um, because they have been attacking civilians on the ground. Um, where they are at this moment in time is a tactical piece of information which I'm not at uh, liberty to discuss at this stage. The second question was specific to Gaddafi. Gaddafi um, is not a target as an individual. Our mission is to uh, deal with command and control, to protect the civilian population, and to deliver the mandate that the United Nations set us. I also saw on open source um, um, Colonel Gaddafi um, talking to uh, personnel um, on the television. We have nothing to support that information. We do not have people on the ground to verify it, um, and that is as much as I can say. with NPR and Global Post. Um, I'm interested to find out what the status of communication is between NATO and the rebels on the ground. Um, previously, when there were some mistakes or mishaps, as Brooks puts it, um, we were told that there was not a whole lot of communication between the rebels and NATO forces. But with them um, asking for and receiving more and more um, political backing, they're meeting at the White House today, for example, I'm interested to find out what the status of communication is now. Thanks. The NATO mandate does not give us uh, any authority to decide on sides at a NATO level. The operational pro um, activities that are being carried out, as I've said, are to protect the civilian population. Any relationship with pro or anti-Gaddafi uh, forces is beyond this, uh, this forum for myself at this stage. Operationally, we are carrying out the mandate to protect the people of, Afghanistan, of um, Libya. I would add uh, from the political side that uh, the Secretary General has had uh, contacts with representatives from the, from the Transitional Council, National Council, at, at their request. And, uh, and he has seen in several occasions uh, Mr. Gibril uh, also on the margins of the contact group uh, on Libya in Doha to exchange views on how the current situation is and the evolving uh, military operations. So basically, we are in contact. I'm not aware of that. I'm not aware that uh, the Secretary General is going to meet with Jibril, but of course uh, things change, uh, so I cannot confirm that. If, uh, that means I'm not, uh, it was not planned. Uh, it is not planned for the time being, but if that changes, I will let you know. I think Anta has a follow-up question. Uh, yes, um, still answer. About, about your answer about uh, Gaddafi, you said that Gaddafi is not a target or individual person. Um, I am wondering, uh, when um, Monday the uh, International Penal Court will launch an arrest warrant against him uh, because uh, responsible of uh, crime against the humanity, Gaddafi will become a military target in that moment? Simply from the operational level, if the International Criminal Court make an announcement, um, they will give that decision when they are ready. At the operational level, we remain focused on our mission, which is deliver to deliver the United Nations Security Council Resolution 1970 and 1973. Beyond that, if the uh, ICC make an announcement, that will be dealt with at a political and at a headquarters level. Carmen, do you wish to say any more? I mean, there is nothing to add to what uh, you have said. Uh, Gaddafi, as such, as is not a target uh, as an individual, because in our mission we are not targeting individuals, and our mandate is to protect civilians. That all, uh, is all I can say for the time being. Follow up, Zedef. Will this have any impact on, on your mission if there is an, an arrest warrant, uh, as it could happen on Monday? For the time being, we have the mandate we have. Mm -hmm. Any slow? Um, yes, um, there are reports that Libyan television is saying that uh, an airstrike in Brega killed uh, a group of civilians um, in a guest house, I think. Um, do you, can you comment on that? Can you comment on that? I can honestly say I do not know any information about an attack or an incident in Brega. 
What I can do, though, is say that in Tripoli two nights ago, we attacked a uh, C2 bunker that had been used to coordinate attacks against civilians. And I do ask, why would the Gaddafi regime place a civilian activity or an entertainment close to such a strategically important command and control center? We use our sophisticated means to determine maximum risk to any civilians, and we successfully struck the target, the command and control target in Tripoli two nights ago. Thank you. Any more questions in Brussels? Okay, last question in Brussels. Uh, Europa Press. Um, yeah, sorry, it's just a quick follow-up on the, on the last question of our colleagues. Do you have any intel or any information whether Gaddafi was inside the complex that was bombed successfully two days ago in the command and control uh, bunker? Thank you. In the command and control uh, bunker. Thank you. Okay. We do not know um, if anybody uh, or who was in that bunker. It had been um, quite clearly used as a command and control centre to deliver um, attacks on the civilian community. And as I've said, and I know previous of, um, spokespersons have said, we do not target uh, Gaddafi as an individual. Our resolution is quite clear. It is to stop attacks on civilian personnel within Libya. Thank you very much. This is all we have time for, unless there are any questions in Naples. I understand for. that there are none, right? I understand that there are none, right? No questions in Naples. Thank you very much, and I really apologize for our technical problems. Uh, see you on Tuesday. Thank you. <laughs>